presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, has reacted to the intervention of the government of Ukraine after they donated 25,000 tons of wheat as emergency food assistance to 1.3 million vulnerable Nigerians in the northeastern region of the country. Hello guys, welcome once again to Think Tank TV. Now, reactions has continually trailed the donation of food and grain items to the Nigerian government by Ukraine. Yes, when I heard this, I actually thought, but wait though, is this really happening? Regardless of what this country is going through, they still have the temerity to donate food to Nigeria. Wow, remarkable indeed. People are going ahead to say that the federal government, um, the reason why the Nigerian government is not doing well in terms of agriculture and food production is because of the insecurity in the northern part of Nigeria, which is caused by Boko Haram. But I asked the question, what about the East? What about the West? What about the South? Take for instance the Southern region of Nigeria where we have the riverine areas. I've barely seen enough of government inputs to encourage fish farming. Anyway, without talking much, let's jump right into hearing the tweet of Peter Obi. Peter Obi did a tweet just a few days ago about the donation of food items to Nigeria. Felt very disappointed in this tweet. Take a look. Let me begin by sincerely appreciating the war-torn nation of Ukraine for their generous donation of tons of grains to Nigeria, thereby aiding our current fight against nationwide hunger. It is disheartening that our once economically confident nation, blessed with vast arable land and abundant natural resources, now relies on a war-torn Ukraine for food assistance. This national disgrace stems from years of leadership failure, necessitating urgent reflection and a reordering of our national priorities and resource management and allocation. Despite the conflict, Ukraine feeds itself and exports agricultural products worth over $25 billion, which is about the same value as our crude oil export earnings. And it serves as a strategic global food supplier even providing aid to a peaceful yet unproductive Nigeria. To overcome this embarrassment, we must aggressively reorder our priorities by investing resources in productive sectors like agriculture. Addressing insecurity is crucial for farmers to return to their fields, enabling a productive manufacturing sector and supporting small businesses. You're seeing it for yourself. Now, one thing I like about Peter Obi is that when he's criticizing, he brings facts and figures. And the truth of the matter is that he has brought an ameliorative measure. It's not just about going ahead to criticize the government. You didn't do this, you didn't do this, you didn't do this. What should they have done if you think what they have done is wrong? And he has obviously preferred solution in the tweet we just read a few hours ago. Now let's jump into hearing the response of the Minister of Agriculture in person of Sinito Abubakar, who has responded to the looting of food items from the National Food Reserves. And I'll be coming back to show you the responses of Dr. Ruben Abati, Rafai Usseni, and Take a look. I understand the gravity of the situation, especially with the unfortunate event of foodstuff warehouse looting amidst these challenges. I want to assure you that our commitment to your well-being remains resolute. We shall commence the distribution of 42,000 metric tons of grains as approved by Mr. President across the 36 states of the Federation as one of the programs to be rolled out this week. We are working hand in hand with NEMA and the DSS to ensure that the grains get to the right people in the right packages and quantities. Furthermore, 58,500 metric tons of milled rice from mega rice millers will also be released into the market for stabilization. All right, I guess this is good news. You've seen it for yourself. Now, that was the response of the Minister of Agriculture in person of Senator Abubakar. A lot of people have spoken ill about the figures he has given, which does not seem to align with the figures that was earlier disclosed to be released by the federal government. I would like you to take a better view about this from Ojini Kaupe, Rafai Useni, and Dr. Ruben Abati as they have dissected the circumstances that surround the tweet of Senator Abubakar. Please do watch intentionally, hit the like button, and also drop your comment in the comment section. Let's get to know what you think about it. I will shall continue to be here to serve you. Senator Abubakar Kiaris, yes. Minister of Agriculture and Food Security. Yes. 
Now, this is the thing I, I don't understand. The, the figure that she gave, he said 42,000 yes. uh, metric tons of grains mm -hmm. and then 58,500 metric tons of uh, milled rice from uh, rice millers. When what they told us originally was that government will provide 42,000 uh, metric tons of grains and then they will get, you know, uh, farmers, big farmers to, pro to give 60,000. Mm -hmm. uh, metric tons. So, what happened to the 1,500 uh, metric tons? It's been reversed. So, no, the, 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 the Minister <laughs> of Agriculture gives us an explanation. Absolutely. Because our 1,500 uh, uh, metric tons are suddenly been subtracted mm -hmm. from the 60,000 yeah. that was promised. What happened? Well, I guess it's in tranches, but, 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 but we need an explanation, really. Uh, many years ago, we used to use that land so well that we used to provide about one third of the tomato in the West African suburb, about 65, 66 there about. I said the 70s, I think it was 73 or 74, we had one of the biggest cocoa windfall where we did over 400,000 metric tons of cocoa. And we've pretty much hovered around that 400,000 from 50 years ago till now. Also, we had a lot of groundnuts, groundnut pyramids, we're good in millet, we're good in other things like that. And still, funny enough, we're doing very well as regards the tumors. But the grains have not been good enough for us. So when you see criticism like that, it's well on point. Yes. Because it's the squandering of our riches. And makes it for the one years now, Yeka would have did that documentary, Squandering of Our Riches, NT and the BBC. And when you look at it critically, it's because we've not been able to pass. So take, for instance, last year, the president promised 150,000 hectares will be cultivated across 36 states of the country. If that was done, then to a large extent, we should be able to get some leeway. I'm sure, okay, probably for this, we would say they can't go across 36 states. I know states like Lagos here does not have a lot of land, very small. I mean, it's, it's square meters. States like Ogo has a lot of land. About 15, 16,000 square kilometers of land. Since like Niger can do even multiple. But insecurity is stopping us. So, at first, how quickly can we stop the insecurity problem? Secondly, also incentivize farmers to be able to go back to the farm and ensure that they cultivate mm -hmm. for having a storage system. Because another problem about cultivation is post harvest losses. So, having a storage system. And also embracing technology and value addition in agricultural value chain. So Absolutely. take for instance, the Netherlands does very well in agriculture, but they have smaller land compared to Nigeria. But they've been able to do well and harness their resources. So yes. how can we, if my memory serves me right, Nigeria should be bigger than Ukraine in terms of land. I think Ukraine is about 600,000 square kilometers of land or thereabouts, if my memory serves me right. But they can still churn out grain, and, and I think they're about the six or seven largest producer of grain. And I'm sure that's because of the war. Yeah. If not because of the war, they should be doing way better than that in yeah. numbers. So it's about looking at these holistic touch points I've talked about right. and investing massively in them. You've seen it for yourself. Now, I remember when I was younger, I used to see fertilizer that they used to write on it not to be sold. And it was distributed for free by the federal government of Nigeria. What happened to all those free donations to farmers? Because obviously we all know that this would encourage farming. The federal government has obviously left everything to individuals to do how they want. Everybody wants to work in the oil and gas sector, in NNPC, in NLNG, in the insurance company, in the banks, in white collar jobs, as important as they are. The question is that when we all earn these monies, who are we going to buy the food items from? Obviously, we all know that little or nothing is done about the agricultural sector. And I keep saying it that for you to do something in the agricultural sector is just about a policy issue. It's a policy issue. Let me give you some instances so you can understand that we don't just criticize, we are also providing ameliorative measures. But the question is that will they take these advices that we give on these platforms? For instance, a governor goes into office or a president gets into office and says that anybody who is willing to farm, you're going to have a CFO for free. And we're going to ensure that we monitor the land that we've given to you to ensure that it is used for farming. Tell me what will happen to the farm, to the agricultural sector. People will obviously leave their white collar jobs and go and get sea of old. Because obviously when we have the sea of old, you can go ahead to get loans and facilities from banks that will encourage you to be able to get equipment that can mechanize your farming system. That's one policy. What about the federal government coming out to say that, okay, um, and we're we going to invest this money in the, uh, in, in, in the bank so that they can give out one-digit interest loans to agri-farmers. 
I know that all that is done, but how efficient has that process been? Because obviously when people begin to have one-digit interest loans, what will happen? People are going to be leaving their white-collar jobs and concentrate on farming. This is a policy issue that can help the agricultural sector because obviously we must have a think tank. We must do well to beyond just going on radio and on television to say things that the federal government is doing in the construction and all that. Agricultural sector is very important. Just imagine where people go ahead to loot farms, people go ahead to loot warehouses and loot vehicles. That is obviously sounding like anarchy. I don't want to say that because we never pray for that to happen in Nigeria. Please, I'd like you to go to the comment section and give us a constructive criticism or a constructive solution to what you think can be the solution of the Nigerian problem and we shall continue to be here to serve. Many thanks indeed to all our viewers and returning subscribers. We really do not take it lightly. My name again is Moses and this is Think Tank TV. Please, intentionally you want to hit the like button. You need to hit the like button so that YouTube can recommend this video for more people to see. See you on our next video. Bye for now.